I'm Kristen Jack Boney. Welcome to From Confusion to Clarity, Creating a Comprehensive Test Plan. A little bit about me before we get started. I'm the author of The Complete Software Tester. I'm the creator of the Monday Morning Automation YouTube show. I'm the author of the LinkedIn learning course called Postman Essential Training. I'm a blogger at Think Like a Tester, and I'm a Principal Engineer 3 for software testing at Paylocity. So we're going to talk today about 10 steps to create a good test plan for a complicated feature. And as we go through these steps, I will be using a real world example from a previous company that I worked for. These steps are going to be divided into two sections. The first five steps are part of research. And then the second five steps are going to be part of writing the test plan. So step one is investigate the use case. Ask yourself, why is this feature being added? What kinds of problems is it aiming to solve? So for my real world example, we're going to be talking about a feature called the lead assignment engine. This was a way to help insurance company managers assign new insurance leads to their agents in a way that made sense. It minimized the work that the managers needed to do because the assignments would happen automatically. The next step in our process is to read the acceptance criteria. What are the common usage flows with the feature? What should happen in a negative scenario? For example, if a user makes a mistake or if the user is in a zero state. So for this lead assignment engine, we had some acceptance criteria and here are just two examples. Given the rules for the lead assignment engine have been configured, when a new lead comes in, then it will be assigned to the correct agent according to the rules. And then here's one example of negative AC. Given a new lead comes in, when the lead does not match any of the agent's rules, then the lead will be assigned to the manager. Step three is to conduct exploratory testing. What does the feature look like while you are using it? Can you access the feature from more than one area of the application? Can you back out of the feature after you've started using it? What happens if you use the feature in the wrong way? So for this lead assignment engine, one of the things that I discovered was that the UI was only available to admin users. They were the only ones who could set up the engine. And it was only accessible from one menu entry. It was easy for the admin to set rules for states. And when I say states, I'm referring to US states like Massachusetts and Connecticut. It was easy to set up rules for insurance types and percentage of leads. Um, but it was also easy to set up rules that didn't work. Step four is to identify your input points. So what places can the user enter information? What kinds of input can the user enter? Are there places where the user can take a picture or record a video? Are there places where the user can upload a file? These are going to be some crucial points to test because these are where vulnerabilities can hide. Security issues can be exploited by using user input. So when I investigated the lead assignment engine, I discovered that I had to enter valid states into the state field and insurance types were chosen by dropdown. So that made things a little bit easier because the user could only choose from a set number of insurance types. The user could type any whole number into the percentage field as long as it was less than 100. So there was validation if somebody tried to type in a value that was more than 100. Now, step five is to identify your user configurations. Is this feature only available for certain users? What platforms is this feature available on? What browsers does it support? What mobile OS versions and devices does it support? Does the feature require internet connectivity? Are there any storage requirements? 
So for my feature, I discovered as I was doing that exploratory testing that it was only available to admins. The feature should also be available on all browsers, but it was not available on mobile because our application was not on mobile. So we didn't need to worry about that. The feature did require internet connectivity to set up and use. And the values that we were setting needed to be stored in the database. So now that we have done our research and identified all of this information, it's time to write the plan. So step six is to create happy path tests. So add a test for the most typical user journey, then add a test for other common journeys. And remember to validate that the actions have saved correctly. It's not enough just to see that the feature looks like it's working in the UI. You want to make sure that when you're saving, it's really saving to the database. So for my lead assignment engine project, the first thing I did was I did a test where the lead assignment engine was set to sort by state. Then I did a test where the lead assignment engine was set to sort by percentage, because both of those tests were going to be the most common use cases for this feature. And for each of those tests, I validated that the leads that were sent in were assigned to the correct person. Step seven is to add tests for acceptance criteria. So now's the time where you go back and you look at the AC that hopefully your product owner has written for the feature. And you'll probably discover that some of the AC have already been covered by the happy path tests that you wrote. But now make sure to add in tests that cover the rest of the AC. And remember that the product owner had reasons for including these AC. Sometimes you might look at acceptance criteria and you might say, oh, I don't think a user would really do that. But the product owner likely has been talking to customers. And so they might have discovered that customers have encountered this scenario. So make sure you include those AC in your tests. So for the lead assignment engine project, I set it to the lead assignment engine to sort all of the agents into Massachusetts and Connecticut, because that's where a lot of the agents were from. But then I ran a test where I added a lead from New York and I validated that the lead went to the manager. So this was one of our negative tests that was mentioned in the acceptance criteria. Step eight is to create more negative tests. So you can do things like create tests that back out of a step instead of moving forward with the next step. You can test the limits of your input fields. You can test putting disallowed input into input fields. For example, you could try putting letters into a field that should only be taking numbers. And you can test uploading disallowed file types. So for my project, I created a new rule and I backed out without saving it to make sure that that rule was not applied. I tried to create rules where the agent percentages added up to more than 100%. And then I tried to give an agent a rule with a state of XX. And so for those scenarios, I made sure that I got an appropriate error message. So for step nine, create tests that isolate one parameter at a time. So a lot of times a complicated feature will have more than one kind of parameter that can be set to various levels. So if there are a number of different configuration options, create tests that exercise each option individually. This way you can find any hard to find bugs. And it's also a lot easier to discover those bugs when you're testing these parameters one at a time than if you're testing everything all at once. If something doesn't go right when you're testing everything all at once, it can be difficult to tease out exactly what the problem is. So for each configuration option, create a test for the scenario where the option is turned off entirely, and then create tests for all the different settings of the option. So in my case, first thing I did was I turned off the lead assignment engine completely, and then I validated that the manager could manually assign leads. And then I created testing scenarios just for sorting by state, I created testing scenarios just for sorting by percentage, 
And I also created testing scenarios just for sorting by insurance type, which was another parameter that we had. And then finally, step 10 is to create tests that use those parameters in combination because it's likely that your users will use some of those parameters more than one at a time. So think of all the possible parameter combinations that could be used in the feature, then identify the most likely parameter combinations and create tests using those combinations. And then finally create a test that uses every possible parameter all at once, if that's possible. So for me, I created a simple scenario where I was sorting by state and then by percentage. So for example, we had two agents that would get leads from Massachusetts, but then of those two agents, one of the agents was assigned to get 75% of the leads and the other would just get 25%. Then I created a scenario where leads were sorted by percentage first, then by state. So for example, I could have agents where one of the agents gets 50% of the leads, but then the two other agents get either the leads from Massachusetts or from Connecticut, depending on which agent is from which state. And then I could create a complicated scenario with 10 different agents, some of whom were sorted by percentage, some of whom were sorted by state, and even some of whom were sorted by insurance type. So hopefully you have found these suggestions helpful um, and I'm looking forward to your questions. As a reminder, you can find my book, The Complete Software Tester at Amazon. You can find my free YouTube show called Monday Morning Automation at the Thinking Tester YouTube channel. My Postman Essential Training course is at LinkedIn Learning. My blog is called Think Like a Tester and you can find that at thinkingtester.com. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn or on X, formerly known as Twitter. Thanks.